Benchmarking your PC is a vital way to make sure it's performing as expected and performing stably. Cinebench is one of the very best tools out there to put your CPU through its paces. Since the release of Cinebench R23, some things have changed to give you even more control over your CPU benchmarking. Here we're going to show you how to use it. If you've just picked up a powerful new CPU like one of the Ryzen 7 family such as the 5800X or 5900X then lucky you. The best way to really put your new CPU through its paces and justify the expense of the upgrade is to benchmark it. There are various tools you can use but Cinebench is the go-to for most enthusiasts. In a relatively fast 10 minute test, Cinebench uses a unique image rendering process that maxes out all your CPU cores giving you the perfect picture of the power inside your PC. Its tests give you a far more accurate real-world benchmark reading than most other benchmarks, which tend to be, shall we say, more synthetic. Cinebench R15, R20 or R23. If you look into Cinebench, you may find there are a few different versions floating around. For all intents and purposes, the latest version, R23, is the best one to use. It's the most accurate tests, has new features like easily testing single core performance and will automatically disable itself if your PC doesn't have the required RAM to run it. So stick with R23. Let's crack on shall we? How to use Cinebench R23. Once you've downloaded and installed Cinebench R23 it's time to start benchmarking. With Cinebench R23 open you'll see it's a little different if you've used previous versions. The default options at the top left corner are now a multi-core and single core test. Also note that due to the new algorithms, benchmark scores can't be compared with previous versions. Clicking either of these will run the new 10 minute thermal throttling test. But before you do this, you should set up a way to measure the temperature of your CPU during the benchmarks. This is important as the benchmark will put your CPU under a lot of stress and you'll want to know it's not overheating. One of the more accurate tools for measuring CPU temperature is HW Info, which is generally a great tool for keeping an eye on all the moving parts inside your PC. Once you've installed HW Info, open it. You can check the sensors only box. In the main screen, scroll down to the CPU section and left click it to highlight it. Optionally, you can right click it and click show graph. Leave HW Info open and click reset the clock icon just before you run the benchmark in Cinebench to monitor the temperature throughout the test. Next, back in Cinebench, click the benchmark you want to run, single core or multi core, and 10 minutes later you'll have your result. Take a look at the maximum temperature in HW Info 64 to see how hot the benchmark gets your CPU running. Maximum recommended CPU temperatures vary, but you really don't want to be going over 80 degrees C in a multi core test. That sounds like a lot. There are other things you can do with Cinebench. Go to File Advanced Benchmark and you'll get to change your test duration to 30 minutes, which will be more of a system stability test. This is obviously much more strenuous, but if something goes wrong during the test, like your PC crashing, then you may need to make adjustments to your CPU in the way of thermals, undervolting and so on. Now that you put your CPU through its paces, why not stress test your GPU and take a look at our GPU buying guide to see what to look for in a graphics card this year. Links to all of that in the description. Okay, as always, thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.